Today is the Feast of Tabernacles, one of the holy autumn feasts. Let us share the Word of God with a sermon titled, The Trial That Comes Upon the Whole World. People say that since the creation of Earth, there has never been a trial as great as the coronavirus that has been affecting everyone in the world these days. Let us examine what we, the people of God, should pay attention to and which path we should walk in our life of faith when this kind of trial comes upon the whole world. Following the truth that God has taught us, let us lead even one more soul into the arms of God, even during this COVID-19 pandemic, so that we can return to our eternal home, heaven, all together. Let's look at the words of God in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 10. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. Him who overcomes, I'll make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will he leave it. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This present disaster that has come upon the global village is a great trial that all people around the whole world are experiencing simultaneously. There are many verses in the Bible that contain the word trial, and we use it a lot in our life of faith. In the records of the Bible, what does God say about the ones who are resilient and overcome the time of trial? I will make them the pillars in the temple of God. Those who are victorious will become the pillars and they will have the name of the new Jerusalem who is coming down out of heaven and the new name of Christ. God recorded in the Bible what can be done only by those who overcome the trial. The path of the gospel we are walking today is likened to the trial and test the Israelites experienced during their 40-year journey in the desert 3,500 years ago in the time of Moses. When the people of Israel stumbled over a trial and fell into a test, just a few overcame it and lived a victorious life of faith. The Israelites' 40-year journey in the desert can be compared to our journey in this desert of faith. We can fully understand the relationship between prophecy and its fulfillment here. During the 40 years spent in the wilderness, every situation that the Israelites encountered was a trial and a test. God sometimes humbled the Israelites, sometimes exalted them, sometimes made them hungry, and sometimes provided them with abundant food. He sometimes let them fight against a nation stronger than Israel, and sometimes enabled them to win the battle when there was no chance of victory. God placed the Israelites in numerous predicaments and consistently reminded them of the fact that they would always achieve victory in the desert as God was with them. God also constantly taught them through many trials that as long as they obeyed the Word of God, they would surely enter the promised land of Canaan. Now let's go back to the history of 3,500 years ago. Just as all the situations during the 40 years of the desert life were trials, we are facing many trials such as COVID-19 and the anxieties of life. While we 
are walking in the desert of faith on the way to the kingdom of heaven. The Bible awakens us to the fact that every situation given to us is a test and a trial to overcome. Let's look at the teaching in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1. Be careful to follow every command I'm giving you today, so that you may live and increase, and may enter and possess the land that the Lord promised on oath to your forefathers. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the desert these forty years, to humble you and to test you, in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep His commands. He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your fathers had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothes did not wear out, and your feet did not swell during these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in his ways and revering him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with streams and pools of water, with springs flowing in the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce, and you will lack nothing. A land where the rocks are iron, and you can dig copper out of the hills. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land He has given you. According to Deuteronomy chapter 8, at every moment of the Israelites' forty years in the desert, God put them in a series of situations. It is written in verse 3, He humbled you. A situation that caused them to be humble was given. As it is written, causing you to hunger, they were put in a situation that caused them to be hungry. As it is written, feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your fathers had known, God put them in a situation where He provided them with manna to eat. God also put them in a situation where their clothes did not wear out for forty years. So they did not even need to mend them or make new clothing. All the situations during the forty years in the desert were a series of tests. For some people, the situation was uncomfortable. For some others, that situation was uncomfortable. For some others, another situation made them uncomfortable. In some other cases, God provided for them in abundance. They were either given too much or too little. Sometimes their situations were uncomfortable, and other times their situations were too comfortable. In the midst of the trials that come upon the whole world, we must understand that we are now in the same situation. Therefore, we must overcome the trials which are part of the prophecy. We should not consider the coronavirus as simply a medical dilemma. Since God made known that such a trial would come upon the whole world, we should ask ourselves, what did God want to teach His people? By putting them in different situations every moment during the forty years in the desert. God sometimes humbled them, sometimes caused them to hunger, and other times fed them with manna abundantly. The Israelites ate manna, but didn't they all die? It is because man cannot live on bread alone. Since mankind cannot only live on food that fills their stomachs, the spiritual food, that is the Word of God, is absolutely necessary for them to live. In order to make the Israelites realize and learn this lesson, God orchestrated various situations, such as providing them with daily bread, or leading them through the thirsty and waterless land. That is why the Bible says, it is to know 
what was in your heart, whether or not you'd keep his commands. When we look at 1 Peter chapter 5, it is written that today we are in a situation where the devil is prowling around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. What is emphasized in 1 Peter 5 is faith. It says, resist him, standing firm in the faith. To stand firm in the faith, you have practiced preaching from the sermon books and are now preaching to your acquaintances and families online. Each and every one of you has been making much effort, lest you should neglect studying the Word of God. All of your effort is to win the victory at the hour of trial that comes upon the whole world. Some weak and immature members might misunderstand this situation, thinking, God put us in this situation to rest. Everyone. God said in Revelation 2.10, Be faithful even to the point of death in order to go to the kingdom of heaven. If we live an easy and comfortable life, then we must be aware that our souls are in danger. During this preaching week of the Feast of Tabernacles, let us preach to our acquaintances and friends who we can meet face to face. However, if we cannot meet them in person, we can preach this gospel to our families, friends, and acquaintances through online meetings. God always allows us to be in certain difficult situations to test how we endure and overcome them. If God from the beginning had led the Israelites to a place where there was abundant water, they would not have complained, saying, there is no water. If He had led them to a place where there was plenty of food, they would not have complained, saying, there is no food to eat. However, God sometimes put them in a lacking and uncomfortable situation. In that situation, people may have thought, we will starve to death because there is no food. They feel so hopeless. At that time, they came to complain and grumble. Everyone, even if a trial comes upon the whole world, through this preaching week of the Feast of Tabernacles, we should fill ourselves with spiritual food, that is, the Word of God, and march toward the Kingdom of Heaven, honoring only our God. This is the very lesson that we must learn from the life in the desert. It is said in Revelation chapter 3, trial is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. No matter what situation, we must neither let go of God nor forget His Word. As we are living in the age of the Feast of Tabernacles, let us preach the gospel to those who have not yet heard it during the preaching week of this feast. Let's move on to Deuteronomy chapter 28. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1, it says, If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all His commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. All these blessings will come upon you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. You'll be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed, the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks. Your basket and your kneading trough will be blessed. You'll be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. Here too it is written, if you obey. Doesn't obeying God mean absolutely following the Word of God in any circumstance? It is just like the widow in Zarephath. She had only the last meal for herself and her son. After that, they might die of starvation because there is no more food left. However, Elijah appeared and asked her, Please bring me a piece of bread. She was ready for her life to end on the earth after eating the last meal with her son. When she was asked to bring the last of her food to him, it was a big test to the widow in Zarephath. It was a true test of her faith.
as a result of obeying his request and serving him with the meal. Her jug of oil did not run dry, and her jar of flour was not used up until the time came when the crops could grow. Didn't she receive a gracious blessing? All the situations that are happening around us are trials. In the desert of faith, different kinds of trials will come upon the whole world and will put everyone to the test. That is why it is written in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1, Fully obey your God. We must fully obey God and do as God commands us in any situation. I could not obey because I had no food to eat. I could not do that because of a lack of time. When we make efforts to obey Him rather than make an excuse, God will continue to open the way. Even in the COVID-19 pandemic, we constantly receive the news about fruit being born day after day. Between those who think it is possible and those who do not think it is possible, and between those who put God's Word into practice and those who do not, God creates a situation and observes who is obeying His Word and who is disobeying it. During the preaching week of the Feast of Tabernacles, let us bear abundant good fruits. Let us be found as those who have overcome all trials that come upon the whole world. As for the trial coming upon the whole world, Jesus also warned in Luke chapter 21. Let's take a look at Luke chapter 21, verse 34. Be careful, or, if you are not careful, what will happen? Your hearts will be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness. And what else will your hearts be weighed down with? The anxieties of life. And that day will close on you unexpectedly like a trap. Those who repeatedly compromise with circumstances justify themselves thinking, God told us to preach diligently. But it would be okay even if I do not preach since I am in a difficult situation like this. They indulge themselves in living according to circumstances, not according to God's Word. It was natural for the Israelites to grumble because they had no food. However, what was the result of their grumbling during their 40-year journey in the desert? Since they were swayed by the situations, all the ways to enter the land of Canaan were blocked. Couldn't God have rained down manna from heaven for the Israelites and provided enough water for them to drink from the very beginning of their desert journey? However, He put them in such difficult situations to see their faith through their actions. In this way, He separated those who had faith from those who did not. Just as God separated 300 warriors from the 32,000 Israelites by gradually reducing the size of Gideon's army, He separated Israelites in the desert. God told Gideon to announce to the people, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back. So 22,000 men left. Then God said to Gideon, take them down to the water. By looking at how they drink water, God judged their mindset. So Jesus said, be careful, or, if you are not careful, your hearts will be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life, and that day will close on you, unexpectedly, like a trap. Let's continue with verse 35. For it will come upon all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen, and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Let us keep in mind that every circumstance given to us is to test our faith. Let us take a look at John chapter 13, verse 7. Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Jesus said, Later you will surely understand why I said this. Everyone, we need to know why God says, Just obey my words. 
follow my teachings. We do not fully know the spiritual things in the fourth or fifth dimensional world, but God knows everything. So God says, if you believe in me, obey my words. When you do so, you will see whether or not spiritual blessings will come upon you. The whole world is now experiencing the great tribulation called COVID-19. Our daily activities are restricted and we are unable to freely gather for worship. Then, what if we drift away from God's Word because we are in this situation where we are restricted from going to church? We should overcome all these difficulties and stand firm in the faith. Spiritually, we are in a very dangerous situation. Why are we in this situation? To those who know the reason for a situation and face it, nothing becomes a hindrance. However, to those who do not know the reason behind a situation, it becomes a hindrance and an excuse. Using a situation as an excuse is an act of weak faith for those who fail to overcome the test of temptation. We may encounter something even more serious in the future. If God says, stop preaching during the COVID-19 pandemic, we would have to stop. But if not, we should diligently find ways to preach. In the book of John chapter 13, Jesus said, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Let's move on to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting forty days and forty nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point in the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For it is written, He'll command His angels concerning you, and they'll lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. Satan put Jesus in three different situations. After Jesus fasted for forty days, Satan tempted him with physical food. When we are hungry, we seek food to satisfy our hunger. However, what did Jesus teach us to prepare rather than physical food? He taught us that God's Word, the spiritual food, is much more important than physical food. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Satan repeatedly created situations to tempt Jesus to prevent him from obeying the will of God. However, look at Jesus' answer even though he was very hungry. Though it was bread that Jesus needed, he said, God's word is more precious than bread. Even when he was hungry, he taught us that spiritual food is more important than physical food. He was never wavered by those situations or dragged into them. For this reason, wasn't he able to overcome all the temptations? In the second temptation, Satan had Jesus stand on the highest point of the temple and said, Throw yourself down. You are holy God, and your angels will come and lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. 
Satan craftily devised those physical situations to tempt Jesus to doubt the power of God. Then Jesus said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. God cannot be tempted by anyone. The Bible has never taught us to test God, but only to believe in Him. Brothers and sisters, Satan always throws us into circumstances where we may drift away from God or fail to obey God's word. In order to overcome every test of temptation, we must not be dragged into situations. Shouldn't we remind ourselves what God taught us to do even in those situations? When Jesus overcame the second temptation, Satan said that he would give him all the splendor of the world if he worshipped him. What is written in the Bible? The Bible says that we must not worship anything or anyone other than God, right? We should only think of God. When we serve and worship only God, we will be able to completely overcome the temptation that is coming upon the whole world as well. So Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4, which is more important, spiritual food or physical food? Is God the object of tests or the object of faith? In the third temptation, Jesus asked, which is right, worshiping anyone or anything else other than God or serving God only? Jesus did everything as recorded in the Bible. He said in the first and second temptation, God's word, spiritual food, is more important. And God is the object of our faith, not the object of test. He said in the third temptation, serve God and worship Him only. Jesus showed us this kind of example of how to overcome temptation. If we fully carry out the words of Jesus, we'll be able to make this autumn feast the Feast of Tabernacles, more fruitful than ever. Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Let us carefully look at what Jesus answered. Watch out that no one deceives you. We must watch out for this. Secondly, Jesus also warned us not to be deceived by false Christs. Therefore, we must watch out for them. Jesus also said, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. In verse 9, Jesus said, You'll be hated by all nations because of me. In verse 10, he mentioned the characteristics of those who have fallen into temptation. He said, At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. Many will hate each other. If we have any feelings of hatred towards anyone in the truth, we must get rid of those feelings immediately. We must think, I'm going through a great test now. Let's continue with verse 11. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Verse 12. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. Verse 13. But he who stands firm to the end, meaning he who overcomes all these circumstances, will be saved. Those who overcome are neither the ones who are tempted in any circumstance, nor the ones who are dragged into hell. The one who stands firm in God's word to the end will be saved. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. Then you will understand why all these situations have come upon you. You do not realize it now, but later you will understand. 
All our beloved members of Zion, let us run with all our strength towards the day when the gospel of the kingdom is preached in Samaria and even to the ends of the earth. Just as father and mother said, I hope that we will all receive complete salvation and go to the eternal kingdom of heaven without leaving anyone behind. Now let me conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.